Hi, this is Sean, and in this lesson, we're going to look at what I call a voicing two. We'll learn how to build it, where to use it, where not to use it, some advanced options as well. So for me, voicings aren't just things we play anywhere. They have a context where they work the best. We'll learn about that, and we'll use the tune I Should Care to demonstrate it. If you'd like to learn more about voicings in context and how to connect them to movements later on, or maybe you just want to get your playing to the level where you've got the freedom to think about that stuff, then consider joining us on Jazz Skills. Meanwhile, please do leave us a like, a subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know when I upload new content and a positive comment if you've got one. Let's get into the lesson. Let's do it this way. Here's my simple C7. You've probably seen before either on YouTube or Jazz Skills. Voicing number one is when we move this root up a half step. And we tend to do that when we're going home. For me, home means down a fifth to major or minor. So for example, C7 to F major, I would do that. Okay. When that's not the case, in other words, when C7 is not going home to F major or F minor, then I use a voicing two. That's one time I use it. Okay, I'll show you the other time as well. A voicing two is where that C7 uses the extra note being up a whole step like that. Now that can happen for a couple of reasons, which we're going to go over, right? There are two times I use that. The first time I use it is when the dominant is not going home, as I said. So let's say it's not going down a fifth to major or minor. So for me, home is down a fifth to major or minor. So from C7, down a fifth, five, four, three, two, one, either to F major or maybe to some kind of F minor, F minor six, F minor seven. If that's not the case, let's say it was going C7 to F7, like it could in the blues. That's down a fifth, but not to major or minor. That's down to dominant, okay? So that's what I mean. Some people get confused with that, so I just wanted to clarify. When that's the case, I'll use a natural two or nine, right? By taking that C up a whole step. That can be at the bottom of the chord, it can be at the top of the chord, it could be anywhere in the chord, okay? because it's all about tension and release. Do you think this voicing, voicing number one, compared to voicing number two, which one has more tension, one or two? One or two? Right, exactly, you can hear that, one, right? Because that has more tension in it, what do we wanna do? We wanna release it, okay? Music is so much about tension and release that we want to release that and take it home. So if it's not going home, I don't do that. I go for voicing number two. And voicing number two can be thought of either as the root moving up a whole step. If you're a level one or two, two is where I start to use voicings with students, then that's just fine for now. If you're a level three student, then think of this as a G minor six, okay? G minor six over C or over C7. Why? Because with the Barry Harris method, we get to we get to play movements using that G minor six diminished. Okay, so to summarize, the root moves up a whole step, and that can be anywhere in the chord. If you realize this is G minor six, then it makes your inverting very easy, and it also gives you movements that you can play later on. That's the basics of it. Now let's see it on a tune. That's where, you know, we get to see any nuances or practical applications. So for this, we'll use I Should Care. This is from our smart tune. Smart tunes are things we have on jazz skills that transpose and allow you to do all kinds of stuff. Let me just play a few bars of it, actually, in case people don't know I Should Care. This doesn't have to be this slow. It could be more like... More swingy. It 
etc. Right. So let's have a look at some of the dominant chords we get and see how this principle will apply. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick look at the dominants and see which ones lead home and which ones do not. OK, G7 goes home to C. Fine. OK, let's give that what we call a tick in England and what many of you will call a check. Right. Same with this G7. It goes down a fifth to C major. So that could be a voicing one as long as the melody doesn't mind. Melody is always king, of course. Then we've got A7. Does that go down a fifth to major or minor? Yes, it goes down a fifth to D minor. So if you're newer, you're probably getting the idea that you need to know things like fifths if you're going to play this music, thirds, all that stuff. E7. Is that going home? No. Because E7 down a fifth would go to A major or A minor. In the key of C, probably A minor because we get an A minor in the key of C. So that one could be a voicing too, because it didn't go home. Okay, that's the kind of thing we do. Then C7 goes to F again. We already know that's home, I think. No, we don't, but it is, because C7 is down a fifth to F. We did say that in the explanation at the beginning. Ah, interesting. Well, this E7 does go down a fifth to A minor 7. OK, so you can probably see why voicing two is not voicing one, right? It's not the one I teach right at the beginning. Its use is slightly less common, but it's important nevertheless. OK, so far we had that E7 was the only one, right? Now I want to move the page, but I'm going to lose all my marks. So let's just do this. We'll mark the E7 again. And then we have this. Well, I want to see if anyone else spots it. Can you spot the next dominant that doesn't go home? And if so, just put it in the chat box for me. Well done, everyone. So that D7 does not go home. So this could be another. See, because it's going to D minor. OK, so that's another opportunity. D minor is not down a fifth from D7. Clearly, it's another opportunity for a voicing too. And actually, this G7 could be in that category as well, but that may also be an exception. I will explain that in a minute. So in our A section, this is an AB tune. We definitely have this one that didn't go home, this D7. We definitely have this E7 that didn't go home. And this G7, I'll show you why it's a bit of a question mark in a minute. So let's set to work learning voicing twos on those areas. Well, E7. Voicing two, simple. We're going to take the E up a whole step like that. The shell here. Shell for me is the bottom and top note of the chord most of the time. And let's see if that works with the tune. So I'll just go from the beginning of that line. Let's see. It's that, isn't it? Here we go. A minor seven. It's okay. It's all right. Um, then C7 to F. B minus 7 flat 5. This E7 is going home. And look at that. Isn't that interesting? So this E7 that does go home to A minor, down a fifth, also has the F in the melody. Well, voicing one is when the E goes up a half step. It doesn't have to be at the bottom of the chord, it can be at the top of the chord. And so it is going home and the writer actually put that F in there, which is interesting. Okay, now the D7. See, sometimes writers know this. I don't know if they knew it this way or a different way. This is just something I noticed after playing a lot, right? So if we look at the D7 coming up with the X on it, that's not going home and also it has this E natural in the melody for a moment. So the writer hears it that way as well, because if I take D7, let's say in first inversion, if I'm playing the chords and melody together, which is what we do on jazz skills, right? You probably saw me playing that way. Got the E natural in there. It hasn't got an E flat in there, right? Which would have been voicing one. And actually, I, I did put a question mark on that G7, but that also has something interesting on it. it. has an A natural there. 
And that is my second filter. The reason I said this one was a question mark is I've noticed if something goes, this is a 2-5 in C, D minor to G7. If it's going back to another 2-5 and then home, then you may even use voicing one on that G7 that's circled. It doesn't have to be voicing two, unless we have this situation, which we do have. That's that A natural in the melody, because that's the other filter. Let me explain that. So if I've got G7 and it's not going home, then definitely I want to go for the voicing two, where the G moves up a whole step for my voicing. If it is going home, like G7 to C major, but it has A in the melody, then it's the same. There's the G in G7, just got it inverted, one, three, five, seven. It's still going to move to A, right? And the reason that one was a question mark to me again was because it goes two, five, two, five, one. There's two, five, D minor, G7, two, five again, going to one. So I found, you know, sometimes you can get away with a voicing one on this G7 in those cases. However, as I said, we have the A in the melody. I'll do a little bit of level three on this as well. So for level threes, let's just clear this off. Let's take that D7 and learn a quick move. So level threes. If we look at this D7 where the root is moved up a whole step, what is the right hand chord? It can be a couple of things, but what is it? A minor six, excellent. Which means we can use Barry Harris scale, A minor six with a B diminished to make a scale of chords. So there's my A minor six, here's my B diminished. Let's see if we can fit it in with the other hand. That would be the scale, but the way I like to look at it is it's an A minor six, B diminished, then another A minor six inverted, B diminished inverted, etc. A minor six, B diminished, all the way up. Which means... Does that work? Let's see. Could work. See that first note? is a diminished note from that scale because there's the diminished that comes from the scale. The B diminished, level threes will follow. I know I'll lose some level twos, bear with us, so I just give level three something. Diminished to minor six, another minor note. So if I was playing slowly enough, maybe something like that. If not, maybe I'll just sometimes just add a tension note. So the tension note, maybe I'll just lower the A to a diminished note, like that. I do that a lot. You see what I mean? So that's how, it's just a taste for level twos and a little bit for level threes. That's how it all joins together with the way we use voicings and connect them to movements. Hope you enjoyed that. Consider joining us on Jazz Skills, where we have a developing fluency course to teach you the language and get you fluent playing it. So it's not just academic information and much more after that, including improvisation, voicings, movements, rhythm, accompanying, support from me and a vibrant community. You name it, we've got it. Take care. Bye for now. <laughs>